Hi, Smarter News. How do you define victory? What does a win really look like? That is a core question in life, but also a core question to some of our big news stories of the day. And I want to give you a good foundation for the big news week we have ahead. For me today, what defines a win is doing this video outside because I have repairs being done inside my house and it's super, super loud, but I did not want to be deterred. So I said, let's take this show on the road straight to the backyard. And actually, this tree serves as a really good prop. So before I get to some of the news stories that are in our current cycle, here's a little perspective. This is a big old oak tree, likely has been around for several hundred years, maybe even since the American Revolution. And on this day, April 19, 1775, it was the shot heard around the world, the Battle of Lexington and Concord, what's perceived as the first battle of the American Revolution. I'm sorry about the wind. But maybe that's a little that's a little dramatic a little dramatic win for us in this moment on april 19 1775 the british were marching on the colonists and what they were going to do was seize their weapons and ammunition and military supplies at the beginning of the day the british were somewhat successful at the end of the day they barely got back to boston and so began the story of the great American Revolution. Now think about that for a moment because this day in history is also a historic day for April 19th, 2021. America is now on Mars and NASA took its first flight of what is a miniature helicopter on the red planet. So think of those two items in American history sharing the same day. So with that added historical perspective, let's turn to this week's news cycle, where we're watching several big stories, including one out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and that is the trial of the former officer accused of killing George Floyd. We're watching closing arguments in this trial. The jury will get this case and they will begin deliberations this week. And they're considering three charges. There are three charges against Derek Chauvin. They include second degree murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter. And here's what you should know about these charges. The jury's not considering whether or not Derek Chauvin intended to kill George Floyd. These charges include whether or not Derek Chauvin behaved in a way, his mental state and his behavior, whether he behaved in such a way that he knowingly was committing a felony, in this case assault that led to George Floyd's death, or that he behaved in a, a reckless or negligent way that showed disregard for human life that led to the death of George Floyd. So that's what the jury is looking at. For the prosecution, a win here obviously is a guilty verdict on any any one of those charges. Could be a few of them, could be one of them. For the defense, obviously they're looking for a not guilty verdict. But bringing this story full circle to the founding of America, remember the American judicial system is, is based on someone innocent until proven guilty facing a jury of their peers. And this is what Derek Chauvin is facing, a jury of his peers who will decide his fate. For the defense, if they win over one person in that jury, that can lead to a hung jury, which could also be viewed as a victory for the defense. So this could go a lot of different directions. It's a developing story and one will continue to watch. As far as this legal proceedings, it could go a few different ways, but it's also important to know that there's also a federal investigation into Derek Chauvin. So we'll be hearing about the particulars of the legal part of this story for months to come. Going back to that question about what does victory really look like, we can look at the legal proceedings with that eye, but we know that there's been a broader conversation about race in America that's been ignited from this particular news story. And that's an interesting question to ponder as well when it comes to victory and race relations in the United States. What does victory really look like? It's a question to ponder. Second story to put on your radar has to do with Russia. We have news out of the European Union that Russia has amassed 150 thousand troops on the border with Ukraine. And that's not just troops, it's also military hospitals, a variety of different equipment and weapons. And a big question is arising now as we've covered this story over the last several weeks. What is Russia up to? What is next here on the border with Ukraine? Russia has said that there's provocative behavior from Ukraine, but what's really going on? In the meantime, inside Russia, there's a very powerful high profile opposition leader. So a big critic of Vladimir Putin who's in prison. And apparently, according to his team, his health is failing. He's on a hunger strike. The United States has said directly that Russia is responsible for his treatment. Others have also joined in on that. But the question remains about what the United States or others is willing to do if something happens to this opposition leader. That's the same question 
about what is the United States willing to do, what are others willing to do if Russia, like they did in 2014, invades Ukraine and there's an armed conflict. So this is a part of the world to watch. Often when we're talking about victory in foreign policy, what does a win look like? It means that you have others coming along with your interests, sharing your values. This is not the case with Russia, but a big question remains about what changes that? What actually leads to change? And finally, what does a victory against COVID-19 really look like? That's been a fundamental question over the last year. It is a big question we're asking today as well as we have news from the CDC. The CDC director came out today and said that infections, hospitalizations, and deaths are all trending higher in America. At the same time, the pace of vaccinations is also increasing. The White House today said that any American over the age of 16 is now eligible for a COVID-19 vaccine. So this continues to be the emphasis by U.S. health officials. The CDC director also mentioned something new today called breakthrough. Breakthrough is when someone's fully vaccinated, but they still get a COVID-19 infection about two weeks after their final vaccination dose. The number is this. We have more than 80 million Americans that are fully vaccinated. They have a record of more than 6,000 who have then developed a COVID-19 infection two weeks after their final dose. The CDC director says this is actually a victory, that none of these people develop severe illness. 30% of them didn't even know that they had COVID-19, they were asymptomatic. So she's looking at this as evidence that the vaccine is working. Expect this to raise some questions though about the efficacy of the vaccine, especially after the last week when you had some of these big pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer and Moderna come out and make reference to additional doses of the vaccine being needed. Also a big question about what is the fate of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So a lot percolating here, but again, at the core is this question, what is a victory in this pandemic really look like for all of us? So just a few stories for you to know this week. I expect developments really on all these stories. We had them all posted on our website as well with links to sources. So if you want a little bit more information, you can read there. In the meantime, live from the backyard and the oak. This is George Washington and this is Martha. Some people name their pets. We name our oak trees. <laughs> And so from, from George, Martha, and the whole gang here, and a bunch of caterpillars that I know, ah, I know they can't hurt me, but they keep on crawling on me while I'm trying to focus on really important topics. So this might be the fleeting and only backyard report, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to your feedback on any of those topics. What does a win really look like? If we do not define the mission, we cannot achieve it, right? So thinking about that from all these stories, is an important exercise for journalists and all of us. Have a great week.